How could these vitamins possibly be increasing cancer incidence? Is this a figment of our imaginations? Good morning friends! In this video, I'm going to tell you why some academics believe that supplementing with vitamins A and E may worsen cancer incidence, may increase mortality from cancer, and may increase all-cause mortality. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. First of all, we have to make some definitions about vitamins A and E regarding vitamin A. Vitamin A is really retinol. It's an active form of vitamin A that we get from animal products, like the livers of animals. On the other hand, beta-carotenoid is a pro-vitamin A carotenoid that needs to be converted into vitamin A by enzymatic processes in our bodies. Today, we'll mostly be speaking about supplementing with beta-carotene, not the active form of vitamin A. And the reason why this was very well studied is because initially, supplementing with beta-carotene was thought to be very helpful because of its abundance in fruits and vegetables. We're also not talking about specific kinds of carotenoids, which generally have very healthful effects. We're not talking about lutein. We're not talking about lycopene. We're also not talking about astaxanthin or zeaxanthin. These are hard to pronounce. The last two have less evidence for their supplementation, whereas the former two have great evidence for their supplementation. With regards to vitamin E, we're speaking mostly about broad spectrum vitamin E supplementation. Vitamin E has five actual molecular forms. Some of them are the more well-known ones, alpha and gamma tocopherols, but there are others. In this video, we're talking about broad spectrum vitamin E supplementation. Unless I indicate otherwise, we're not isolating any of them. Next, where does this fear about increasing the rates of cancer by supplementing with vitamin E and A come from? Well, first of all, I wanna let you guys know the reason I'm making this video is because I offhandedly mentioned in a previous video about why I don't take a multivitamin that I don't like to supplement with broad spectrum vitamin A and vitamin E. And the reason why is because they can increase cancer incidence in some people, and particularly people that have high oxidative states, like smokers, for example. When I said so, to my surprise, I received many questions from subscribers. Generally, my subscribers are some of the most well-read people I've encountered in regard to things that relate to their health, and so I expected that most of them had heard of this. Since many had not, I decided to make a video about the subject briefly. First of all, vitamin A's effects on cancer incidence became known in the 90s. In the 90s, academics were thinking that supplementing with beta carotene could reduce cancer incidence, particularly among smokers. There were three trials in the 90s that shocked academics. Specifically, I'm talking about the alpha tocopherol beta carotene study, the beta carotene and retinol efficacy trial, and the physician's health study. To the shock of academics worldwide, the first two studies indicated that supplementing with beta carotene could increase cancer incidence, whereas the third study found no protective effect from beta carotene supplementation. On the other hand, vitamin E's deleterious effects on health became known around the same time and were confirmed in a 2005 meta-analysis that found that vitamin E supplementation increased all-cause mortality. Next, I want to take you through a comprehensive tour of the meta-analyses done on this subject through the years beginning in the early 2000s. Before I do, maybe I should comment on what a meta-analysis is. A meta-analysis is a kind of research paper in which the academics producing the paper don't actually perform an experiment or an observational trial or anything of that nature themselves. Rather, they just analyze the results of former trials. What they do is, the word meta is there because it's a larger group of analysis. They're looking at many trials and trying to see if there are commonalities between the trials. Usually what they do is decide which trials could be included, which fit their inclusion criteria. Then they go through the individual trials to see if there are methodological issues in those trials. Then they pool the data and study the data maybe in new ways or maybe in the same ways that those trials did. In this case, we're going to be looking at meta-analyses and systematic reviews of randomized controlled trials. Those are the highest caliber of academic evidence. First, we'll begin with a meta-analysis published in 2004 in the very prestigious journal The Lancet. This meta-analysis found no protective effect from supplementing with vitamins on gastrointestinal cancers. However, it did find a protective effect from supplementing with the mineral selenium. They found a reduction of cancer incidence of 51% for those that supplemented with selenium. You'll find this to be a common theme in the next few trials. In fact, selenium appears to be very protective for cancer incidence in particular, although it worsens NAFLD incidence, that's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Next, I already mentioned the meta-analyses from 2005 that found that vitamin E supplementation worsened all-cause mortality, but I didn't mention that it increased the relative risk of all-cause mortality by 4%. 
and that was statistically significant. Next, a 2006 meta-analysis could find no evidence that supplementing with broad-spectrum vitamins A and E could reduce cancer incidence, though they did find that vitamin E's alpha-tocopherol, when supplemented by itself, could reduce cancer incidence and the relative risk reduction was 9%. And a second 2006 meta-analysis concluded that there was no evidence to support supplementing with a multivitamin or multimineral to reduce cancer incidence. A 2007 meta-analysis found that supplementing with beta-carotene could increase all-cause mortality. The relative risk increase was 7%, whereas it found that supplementing with vitamin E was not protective to all-cause mortality and it found that supplementing with selenium was protective for all-cause mortality. They found a protective effect of 15% percent relative risk reduction however when they removed some trials that were a bit more biased the risk reduction reduced to nine percent next an excellent 2008 systematic review and meta-analysis found that supplementing with beta carotene increased risk for cancer incidence by six percent however when they stratified the populations into smokers and non-smokers they found that the risk was entirely among the smokers and among the smokers the relative risk enhancement was ten percent in fact they found that beta carotene supplementation worsened disease progression in cancer Cancer, increasing the risk of mortality from cancers by 16% and this risk was found even among non-smokers. Fascinatingly, they found that selenium's protective effect on cancer incidence was found only among men. When they stratified the population by gender, men were 33% less likely to get cancers, whereas women were not less likely to get cancers when they supplemented with selenium. And by the way, a takeaway here may be that in women, selenium supplementation may be less protective because it's mainly protective, it seems, on cancer incidence, whereas women may be more predisposed to deal with selenium's effects on NAFLD, for example. Although I'm not going to do a comprehensive review of meta-analyses that are on specific cancers, I want to mention for the men watching this about prostate cancer. There was a 2013 meta-analysis that found that supplementing with alpha-tocopherol or beta-carotene both increased incidence of prostate cancers. And this was a major increase in incidence, by the way. Alpha-tocopherol increased the incidence of prostate cancers by 36%, whereas beta-carotene increased it by around 23%. Next, a 2013 meta-analysis done reviewing the Cochrane Review from 2012. By the way, for those who haven't read Cochrane Reviews before, they're excellent reviews, I believe, produced in England. They're usually meta-analyses that try to give a conclusive recommendation to doctors about a subject. They confirmed the results of the Cochrane review, they found that supplementing with beta-carotene at doses above 9.6 milligrams increased all-cause mortality by a mean of 6%. And they found that supplementing with over 15 milligrams of vitamin E increased all-cause mortality by 3%. Next, we're going to review some of the most recent meta-analyses on the subject, beginning with one from 2017. This meta-analysis of 49 trials found that beta-carotene supplementation, when given by itself, increased all-cause mortality by 6%. Whereas in this study, they also looked at vitamin A, not beta-carotene. They found that vitamin A supplementation increased cancer incidence by 16%. And finally, a 2017 review of a former Cochrane review, that Cochrane review, by the way, was evaluating whether supplementing with vitamin E was harmful, whether it could be done without increasing all-cause mortality. That initial review concluded that supplementing with vitamin E was dangerous. This response to the review concluded re-evaluating the data concluded that this was only the case when beta carotene that pro vitamin E carotenoid that we've been talking about was added so beta carotene was so harmful that it muddled the actual analysis on vitamin E's danger. And by the way, most of you are supplementing with vitamin A are actually supplementing with beta carotene. Now that we finally finished reviewing the meta-analyses on the subject, I just want to point out something. Vitamins are not all created equal. We're talking about vitamins A and E here. In particular, we're talking about broad-spectrum vitamin A and in particular beta carotene. And we're also talking about broad-spectrum vitamin E. But for example, supplementing with vitamin D can improve the recovery from cancers, maybe without reducing cancer incidence. On the other hand, supplementing with vitamin C improves or reduces the incidence of many cancers. For example, it can reduce the incidence of esophageal cancer, a kind of throat cancer, by over 40%. So if you were somebody that smokes or drinks, for example, which greatly increase the incidence of esophageal cancer, alcohol does as well, it's one of the main causes, you may want to supplement with vitamin C. I mentioned this just to again remind you guys that we're just talking about vitamins A and E, and also because I received many comments about vitamin C and some people seemed afraid of supplementing with it. It's one of the safer vitamins to supplement with for sure. Although I may make a future video on the risk of kidney stone formation with vitamin C supplementation. That's really one of the only things we need to talk about. Also, we need to talk about how much can be absorbed orally, what's an efficient dose. Maybe I'll make a specific video on vitamin C later. In fact, a later analysis of that initial alpha-tocopherol beta-carotene study from the 90s found that 
Consuming vitamin C, mainly from fruits and vegetables, while supplementing with beta-carotene could attenuate the effects of beta-carotene on cancer incidence. It could actually reduce the incidence of cancer that's coming from this increased beta-carotene consumption. And we'll see why next. Let's talk about the mechanisms. How could these vitamins possibly be increasing cancer incidence? Is this a figment of our imaginations? Well, first, no, it's not a figment of our imagination. As you guys can see in this video, I reviewed the last 20 years of meta-analyses with you, and most, you can see patterns emerging. One of them is that there's not as much evidence or consensus that vitamin E supplementation by itself increases all-cause mortality, but that's been seen many times in meta-analyses. The second is that there is almost a consensus that beta-carotene supplementation, particularly in those with high oxidative states, increases specifically cancer incidence, and particularly cancer incidence related to their oxidative states, particularly for example among smokers smoking related cancers these things are seen consistently we can sort of agree that there is certainly some kind of risk of supplementing with vitamin E and we can certainly agree that supplementing with a kind of vitamin A called beta carotenoid is certainly going to increase cancer risk among people predisposed to cancers due to their lifestyles why might this be well, first of all, let's look at beta carotene. Beta carotene, first of all, doesn't have that much evidence really to say that it is an antioxidant in real life in humans generally. In fact, with high oxidative stress levels, beta carotene can go from a weak antioxidant to a pro-oxidant. And this also happens when you have higher levels of beta carotene, such that if you have a higher oxidative state, or if you take a lot of beta carotene, it's going to get worse for you. It can actually turn into the molecule that damages your DNA and cells, the actual oxidative stress to your body. For those that don't know, for cancers to develop, we have to have some kind of DNA damage that often comes from oxidative stress. And we also have to have our immune systems not being completely vigilant because our immune systems don't just protect us from viruses or bacteria, they also protect us from cancers. People who have very vigilant and capable immune systems are less predisposed to cancers. Now, what about vitamin E? Does it do something particular that we could be concerned about? It certainly does. The first is that it directly modulates immune function, not by reducing oxidative stress and then making your immune system not notice that you have some kind of damage that can cause a cancer, but also that cancers are growing, but rather it directly modulates the immune system, can directly turn it on or off. Next, just like vitamin A, just like beta carotene, at higher doses, vitamin E can become pro-oxidant, and an effect, by the way, that can be inhibited with co-administration of vitamin C. Certain types of vitamin E can also change the amount of vitamin E that you have from other types. So for example, if you supplement with alpha tocopherols, you may reduce the delta or gamma tocopherols in your body. Also, supplementing with vitamin E can inhibit some of vitamin K's impact on clotting. Vitamin E has a pro-hemorrhagic effect that's visible in studies. And finally, supplementing with vitamin E can interfere with the glutathione system. That's our body's natural antioxidant system. In addition to the specific effects of vitamin A and beta carotene in particular and vitamin E, I want to mention also what I mentioned earlier that supplementing with vitamins in general or antioxidants in general could potentially increase cancer incidence in some people. How does this depend? Well, I think the way to think about it is in terms of the mechanisms. So antioxidants reduce or quell oxidative stress. Oxidative stress in turn damages cells, thereby allowing cells to exist that may turn into cancer cells. The immune system inhibits the activity of those cells if it's active. However, the immune system's activity is also regulated by oxidative stress, such that if you supplement with antioxidants, you lower the amount of oxidative stress that your immune system is feeling, which may reduce the activity of the immune system, in turn allowing some cancer cells to grow. That's sort of the mechanism by which generally antioxidants could potentially increase cancer incidence. But they can also protect from cancers by reducing the actual damage to cells initially. So it really depends how your body is and how your lifestyle is. If you have a very oxidative stress prone lifestyle, like you're a smoker, you probably don't want to reduce the activity of your immune system because you have so much damage going on in your body, there's no way the antioxidant protocol is gonna inhibit it completely. So you're gonna have mutated cells. So you probably want your immune system to be hyper vigilant. You certainly don't want to do something that directly turns off your immune system. So for example, there are anti-inflammatory drugs that can also increase cancer incidence like NSAIDs, but also there are certain drugs that block the activity of certain inflammatory cytokines of the immune system. So for example, I have Crohn's disease and Crohn's disease, one of the regular treatments is a tumor necrosis factor alpha blocker. 
A blocking tumor necrosis factor alpha is a bit dangerous. As you can see from its name, tumor necrosis factor alpha isn't called that way by accident. So inhibiting that does increase cancer incidence in some people. So there's many other ways that slowing down the immune system may increase cancer incidence. Antioxidant use may be one of them. Anyway, friends, I'm sorry for being so long-winded. I hope this video was useful for you guys. I actually haven't seen another video on the subject, although I thought it was somewhat common knowledge. Supplementing with vitamin A, particularly the beta carotene form, is very dangerous, particularly in people with higher oxidative state. Whereas supplementing with vitamin E may be dangerous for all-cause mortality in particular and may be worse when you supplement it with beta carotene or vitamin E. Anyway, in this video I gave you a top-down review of the meta-analyses on the subject from the last 20 years. I hope it will genuinely serve to warn you from supplementing with vitamins A and E. When we supplement, we only do it because it should help our health. We shouldn't be taking major risks. Here we have major risks of increased cancer incidence in terms of vitamin A and increased all-cause mortality in terms of vitamin E. Now it may be the case that supplementing with vitamin E by itself is safe, but why run the risk? You're paying money for these things. You're paying to potentially harm yourself. I wouldn't do it myself. I'd rather just eat fruits and vegetables and get those vitamins from there or from liver and not potentially have this enhanced risk of developing cancers. Further, if you guys know people who live lifestyles that are associated with high oxidative stress levels, for example, people that smoke or that have a profession that exposes them to pesticides or paints or something like that, advise these people not to supplement with vitamin A and E and also not to supplement with multivitamins. These things may not be an insurance policy but may worsen their health outcomes. Better safe than sorry. I'll see you this afternoon.